So hi everyone, welcome back to another video and this one we're going to look at the importance of having a smooth controlled backswing and a smooth and controlled build up to the acceleration. So I was working with a client today, Frankie Brandt, and we were looking at controlling his cue um, by using a longer backswing and thinking about getting the cue to build up speed smoothly. So you can see Frankie's cue here over on the left hand side of the screen and this is me playing a shot here over on the right. Now I've synced these two videos so that as we both start our backswings, the videos are perfectly synced. So you can just see now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the video play first and we'll just watch the shot. So if I let it play, so we're both feathering up and the backswings happen. So you can see, can't you, that from when we both start our backswing, you can see that Frankie is managing to hit the ball quite a bit quicker than I am. Now, something that's really important here, I was talking to Frankie about, is one, that we want a long backswing. So let's have a look here. So you can see Frankie's hand is probably starting a little bit further away from the cue ball than mine. So his hand is probably a little bit further back. Mine is very fractionally closer. That was something else we were working on in our sessions yesterday and today. So Frankie could maybe get that hand a little bit closer to the ball for a bit of extra stability when he's bringing the cue back and pushing forward but then the really important thing now so if we watch frankie's cue over here what we were working on was how long it was taking for the cue to build up speed so if we watch frankie's so like i say we're looking over here now watching frankie's cue delivery so if i go frame by frame we see that frankie's done the back swing and then that's the first movement of forward so he goes one two three four five six seven eight nine and then he's he's hit the white on that ninth frame there right so if we now do the same thing let's look over here at my cue action so let's have a look so make sure we're looking over this side so i bring the cue back and then let's watch here so let's watch how many frames it is now so So I can just see my cue starting to move now. So one, two, three, four, five. It's very hard to see actually on mine here. So what I'm going to do is zoom in and have a look at this from a different perspective. So we've zoomed in now, and this will give us a better view of how many frames it takes for my cue to get up to speed. So the cue is coming right the way back, and then we see that little bit of a pause. Interestingly, this finger tapping... So the reason that I tap my finger, I don't even really realise I'm doing it. It gives players a little bit of time in it. It's almost to do with feeling like you're ready to play the shot. It just gives you a bit of extra feel. So my cue comes right the way back. And then let's get it as soon as it starts to move. So it's just starting to move, isn't it? So we can see if we look right at the tip, the first frame. See that? Just moving. So let's get it now. So let's count how many frames. So Frankie's was nine. I'm going one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. So basically double the amount of time for my cue to get up to speed, just over double. So it really takes its time, this nice, you see it getting up to speed, and then it starts to accelerate. So very, very important to have this nice, smooth build-up of the cue speed so that there's no tension and you've got that nice control. If we just, again, if we just rewind this, let's just play it in slow motion. We'll see in half speed. So the feather's up, little pause at the white, cue comes all the way back, and then a smooth build-up, pushing right through the white and keeping still. Okay, so we could see that my cue took a lot longer there to get up to speed. So that was what we, I was working on, trying to give Frankie this idea that we don't have to rush, we can be nice and careful. That gives you a little bit of extra control and helps you to keep the cue in a straight line. Now the other thing that happens with my cue action here in comparison to Frankie's here, and obviously I've spent a long time thinking about these things and working on them, if we play in half speed, watch how there's a bit more of a a weight at the back so when I pull the cue back 
I will almost have a bit more time just waiting with the queue here. So you want this bit of a transition, so you've got um, a change between the queue coming back and then the queue getting up to speed. So we're going to play this in half speed. So you watch my queue come back and then there's a bit of a wait and then it smoothly goes up to speed again. So we just see the difference there. If we look over at Frankie here, it does have a bit of a pause. So nice feathers up, back, and then very quickly the delivery starts. Whereas if we, again, just one more time, if we just have a look over here, you'll see that when I bring the queue back in half speed, queue comes back, bit of a wait, and then the queue gets back up to speed again. So very, very important something that's really going to help you to start having extra queue control, thinking about really controlling the queue on the way back, controlling it on the way forward. There's no panic or rush to get the queue up to speed. It's all about being relaxed, taking your time, and knowing that you can let the queue do the work. So hopefully there's some key things for you to think about when you're trying to improve your own snooker and your own queue action. Now remember that I've got a video coming of me playing Ronnie O'Sullivan in an exhibition frame coming on this channel very, very soon. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe and then you won't miss that upload. As always, if you did enjoy this video, remember to give it a like. If anyone's interested in any personal one-to-one -one coaching sessions, you can have a look in the description box below. All my details there to my website, my email address. Feel free to get in touch with me and I'd love to help you with your game. And as always, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Stay tuned for next week's video. Cheers.